All right, everybody, welcome back to another 319 performance test video. The aircraft has had uh, some substantial updates since the last time I did a performance test. The last time I did one, it was actually pretty much spot on the money, which was a surprise to myself, but a welcome one at that. Um, what I have here is uh, I've got some more takeoff data that I've collected. Uh, I just did a flight at the time of this recording. It was yesterday and we were flying down to Cabo, San Jose del Cabo in Mexico in a 319, so I figured it'd be a good t opportunity to get some very accurate recording numbers. I also um, adjusted my our window where we're going to time it from. It's going to be from the flex detent to reaching V1 on the speed scale exactly, so we don't uh, have to worry about, you know, well, how fast are you rotating? Because when I did it last time, I was a little bit about, oh, rotation can vary, blah, blah, blah. So I essentially just did it um, this time all the way to the V1 marker on the speed scale. And I also wrote down the time to rotation just as a secondary um, estimate. I also got the EPER performance numbers. I recorded them, so we're going to match those up. And somebody was asking on a stream the other day, how long will it take to fill up an Airbus from zero to full? Well, I also remembered to calculate that while we were receiving fuel at the gate. The aircraft from a refueling truck will receive approximately 362 kilograms every minute or 800 pounds per minute from a refueling truck. So to take it from zero to full, it would be about 52 minutes of fueling time to go from zero to completely full. Keep in mind that very rare will you ever be taking off with full fuel in the wing tanks. Um, you know, high 30s I've seen before um, on long flights, uh, 42,000 I believe is, in pounds anyway, is full in the 319, 320, 321 without any extended tanks. And um, I think I've maybe only taken full fuel a handful of times. Very rare we actually use full fuel. But there you have it. Anyway, so I'm going to throw up some of this performance data on the screen here so you can check my work. We're going to see what we've got here, and then we're going to spin up the engines. So in the aircraft payloading, we can see here that the aircraft... Now, I've, I've adjusted the passengers and everything to make it... Um, match the numbers match it and it's this all depends on the configuration of the aircraft so even though we may have a little bit a few more passengers on the real aircraft i believe we had 136 people on board um it's just how the aircraft is laid out that will determine uh the cg and stuff or the extra weight so don't worry about the passenger count being off what we do care about are all these settings here and of course you were fuel. moved what we have actual takeoff weight for the aircraft was 148,600 pounds. You can see that here. And on the aircraft, that translated into kilograms to be 67.4. And we are 67.330. That is pretty darn close. Just about 100 pounds off there. Now that's probably because I'm burning fuel from the APU as we speak, so we're going to hurry up and get this uh, done here. Fuel on board for takeoff was 30.2, 30,200 pounds, which translated three. 13.698 or 13.7 kilograms. There we go there. That's our fuel. Our zero fuel weight was 53.7. Here's our zero fuel weight, 53.640. Pretty darn close. And our gross takeoff weight was 67.3 kilos or 148,500 pounds. That can be seen here. And here is our weight, 67.328. I think I already showed you that one. So we have the uh, performance data set. Our V speeds were as follows, 150, 155, 159, with a flex temp of 70 degrees and a flaps one takeoff. So we can see we have that set up there. We're going off 3.5 left. I've matched the weather conditions to be exact. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. Our weather for the takeoff was winds 0 to 0 at 8 knots. It was calm morning, so I don't have any turbulence, gusts, or wind shear in there. Visibility was uh, plus 10 miles, so what I just gave you 36 makes the sim look a little bit more pretty. Temperature 24 degrees Celsius. Barometric pressure at sea level 2988. And obviously a dry uh, thermals. We don't have to worry about that. We're not climbing up 10,000 feet. Nothing to worry about here runway wetness is dry for a dry takeoff all right so i'm going to fire up the engines and we're going to go ahead and test the performance 
we're looking for a EPR of 1.30 as well with this flex temperature. All right, we're back. The engines are spooled up. You can see with the assumed temperature, our aircraft was actually looking for a 1.304 EPR. This one looks like we're going to be at 1.335 EPR. So just a little bit of a difference there, but that's just to be expected. The real test will be our V1 speed, which according to our notes here says from flex to V1 was 35 seconds. The actual EPA reached during the takeoff roll is 1.300. All right, so let's go ahead and get ready for takeoff. Let's release the parking brake. All right, so here we go. We're going to spool them up to 50%. Here we go, man flex SRS runway, auto thrust blue, forward on the stick. Medium knots thrust is set, 1.335, neutral by 100. All right, V1. <laughs> Guys, look at this. 34 seconds, and we are just at V1. So almost less than one second. Less than one second. Let's see if we can get 35. Look at that. Less than a second off in performance when you talk about the closeness of X-Plane modeling real-world aircraft performance. This is a, a shocker to me as well. I mean, I, I knew we did it the other time and it worked. And to do it again, even after recent updates and everything, and to see the TOLIS perform like this is a, another welcome surprise. I am very happy to see this. Um, obviously, just a small little discrepancy, you know, 1.335. The aircraft actually reached 1.300 EPR on the takeoff roll and that can have that can be a factor of, of so many different things i mean um you know it could be uh, the actual assumed temperature could have been a little bit or not assumed temperature the actual temperature outside may have been a few degrees different or the humidity might have been a little bit different because i'm going off the numbers that we had set up in the aircraft the eper the engines are going to react to what's obviously outside in the ambient air so also that you know life of the engines i don't these are probably brand new engines that are modeled here and they model them off of brand new specs. The 319s that we fly are obviously a little bit more tired airplanes. They have been flying around uh, for quite some time and have a lot of but a lot of time on the airframe. But uh, this is definitely a welcome surprise, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and rotate here, get the aircraft airborne, and let's just do a quick look. Rotate. And 39 seconds. That was a horrible rotation. Gear up. We're in nav mode, but 39 seconds just as I wrote down in my notes as well. That blows me away. That blows me away. There you have it, guys. So, we've done our performance test. We've done it twice. The Tolis has nailed it twice, almost exactly. So if you're ever wondering how realistic this Tolis 319 performance is, there you go. And uh, I'm very impressed with the aircraft. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I will catch you again real soon. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you next time.